let me first uh, say a few words because uh, I traveled uh, around the whole world and so you might not, not also know too much about uh, the place where I'm coming from. So uh, the Forschungszentrum Jülich is well known, but many people don't know where it is. So it's, uh, it's, very, it's in Germany, in the very west part of Germany, next to the border, to, uh, to the Belgian and the Netherlands. It's uh, uh, although the same place with the Nobel Prize, it's a very small city with, uh, uh, with some, uh, some agriculture very famous for, and uh, some historical buildings. And uh, as you might see here, we have, uh, have also some snow in the last week. This is very curious that we have a look at the temperatures here. So let me continue on our group. Let me continue on, on, on our group. At the research center, uh, is, uh, the director is uh, Rainer Wasser, and uh, we have uh, three other group leaders working on resistive rum. And uh, I'm mostly concerned about some film technology. Then my colleague Vikas Rana is responsible for the device applications, and uh, Christoph Schott, who is doing basic science on, uh, on the resistive rum topics. So, um, so I'm responsible for the thin film growth. This is my PLD group. And we are working mainly on uh, resistive switching, but we have also some topics on multiferroids and uh, heterostructures. So coming to the classification of resistive RAM, we have a broad variety of physical mechanisms uh, which uh, lead to resistive switching. So um, it can be a famous phase change effect. Then we have the effect uh, which we call thermochemical mechanism, which reads uh, leads to unipolar switching, and uh, as we heard in the previous talk, it can be also a pure electronic effect. It can be uh, also a, a, a part of moving uh, metal ions, which is called electrochemical metallization effect. But I would like to focus today on the what we call valence change mechanism, where um, a, a change of the valence in the material leads to a bipolar resistive switching in the material. So let me show this uh, sketch uh, about uh, the, the how, in, in a simple way, we think that uh, this effect occurs. This is a, a kind of uh, science art from our, one of our latest uh, books from uh, Rainer Wasser. So we, the idea behind this, this is, a simp this is a simplified picture of uh, resistive switching in zirconium oxide can be very similar for all other binary oxides. The idea is that we, uh, during the forming process, we form a filament in the material, which is um, already in the reduced state. Here, the yellow part is a former completely oxidized part, and here, during electroforming, we form a filament, which is uh, already reduced. It means have a lot of oxygen vacancies, and uh, also the metal ion is in a reduced valence state. So. Um, the idea is that during resistive switching, we only move a, a small part of the, of the, uh, in, in the vicinity of the electrode, we move the oxygen vacancies back and forth, thereby move the device between the low and the high resistive state. So um, this kind of sketches you can see everywhere. Uh, in the literature, they, I took this uh, simple uh, picture from our group. So um, drawing nice pictures is a nice type of science art, but we would like to go beyond science art. We would really like to prove valence changes in the material by uh, using uh, different types of spectroscopic methods and to really see a valence change in the material, not only proposing it in an indirect way. So uh, what we would like to do is, uh, during switching, what takes place during switching, we want to prove a change of the valence, changes of morphology or the geometry, or even changes of the phase during resistive switching. And the other important questions, uh, which we already heard in the previous talk, is also, is it a local process? Does the switching go, goes on along a, a single filament? Or is it a homogeneous process which takes place? And uh, as you can easily understand, this is key importance for device scaling. So, um, so this is the outline of my talk. I, uh, in the first part of my talk, I will talk about strontium titanite, which is uh, well accepted to uh, be a filamentary type of uh, resistive switching system. And uh, I will also talk about, in the second 
part of my talk about the PCMO, which is generally accepted a P-type conducting material, which is a representative of the, the interface phase type um, homogeneous switching type. So um, let me start with the strontium titanite. These are the people who did the work. So I will start in the strontium titanite saying a few words about the device properties, then um, investigating the samples by some surface sensitive methods. And for uh, the surface, uh, surface sensitive methods, we had to get rid of the top electrode to get access to the device interface. And at the end, I will come and compare the results to a technique which gives us uh, information, bulk information about the devices. So um, this is strontium titanite, a nice model system for um, resistive switching because uh, its defect chemistry is well known over more than 10 years. Uh, it's well known that uh, oxygen vacancies affect donors, and therefore by introducing oxygen vacancies, you can uh, dope the material and induce a metal insulator transition. So um, the other point is that the oxygen vacancies are double, double charged, and that we could easily move the oxygen vacancies in the electric field. So the, if you are lucky, you get this kind of uh, IV curve, which is very similar to the one on the science art picture I've shown you. But if you have a closer look, you can have a situation which is much more complicated and unexpected. You can see we can have two types of switching polarities in one and the same device. At um, negative uh, polarity, you can decide if you will either continue on this counter eight wise polarity or if you further um, increase the device voltage, then you end up on this um, orange curve, which we call eight wise switching curve. And um, similar things have also been uh, observed for other materials in the literature, and we wanted to understand the, uh, these different types of switching and investigated our samples by uh, removing the top electrode. We put the devices to a certain, to a certain resistive state, then we removed the electrode by uh, this kind of lift-off process, and then we had to look at the, at, the, uh, at the remaining part of the interface by the conductive tip AFM and the AFM. And what you can see here is uh, the, top the topography of a delaminated device. And what you can easily see is that most of the part of the device is nearly, nearly undisturbed. And then at the edges, we see a crater-like structure, which is, uh, if you have a look at the conductivity of devices, this is the area where the current flows in the devices. So nearly the rest of the area is uh, nearly insulating, as it was before the forming procedure. but. Um, only this area around the area where the device has been morpho morphology has changed, we see a conductivity. And if you have a closer look, we see a, uh, see a key conducting area at the edges of the device. And if you have a closer look, we also get the halo region. Uh, I will come to this uh, effect later. So let me first show you a TEM picture which was, uh, which was conducted in this area by putting a FIP lamella on this area that we can see that um, the area where we see the morphology changes has a high density of defects and, uh, compared to the rest of the devices. So um, what I've shown you up to now is um, the, the conductivity picture of a conductivity map of the device after the removal of the top electrode. This is what I have again shown here. But what we now did with the conductive tip AFM is doing more than read out, than read out on what we have. We start to increase the voltage in, of, on the surface in that way that we start to switch with the conductive tip. And uh, therefore, we, uh, we, uh, therefore, we scan the, the sample with a voltage, with a negative voltage of minus five and what you see here is that this halo region has vanished around the main, the main um, filament. And if you scan again with, uh, if you scan again 
with a positive voltage, we can see that we can switch on the area outside the, the main crater region. We can, can switch the whole area completely on with a positive voltage. And we can repeat it, uh, we can switch it off with a negative voltage and switch it on with a positive voltage back and forth. So that means that next to the region which was formed during forming, we can on principle switch the whole device by a conductive tip electrode and the switching polarity is that way that we switch on the sample with a positive polarity. So um, this is what I've shown you on the previous slide. And the interesting thing is, we can also start to switch the main filament region by, uh, by the conductive tip. And the interesting thing about this is that uh, the polarity is vice versa. We can switch this area, we can switch the area on with a negative polarity and we switch it, switch it off with a positive polarity. So these two types of switching which we observe in the devices have this, which I have shown you in the beginning on the IV curves, this 8 voice polarity or the counter 8 voice polarity. So we uh, assign the 8 voice polarity to a type of switching where the whole electrode can in principle contribute to the conductivity and the counter 8 voice polarity to a switching type where, which is locally confined along the filaments which we formed during our electroforming procedure. So uh, the idea is about this switching uh, still not completely clear. I would say this type of switching, the counter eight rises, the polarity is very intuitive and also consistent with the science art picture I have shown in the beginning. So uh, we move with the positive, uh, with the negative tip, we move the oxygen vacancies to the surface and thereby we get the low resistive state and by uh, applying a positive voltage to the tip, we retract the oxygen vacancies and end up in the high resistive state. So this explanation is very, uh, uh, very intuitive. Um, to, to explain the other effect, uh, we are uh, still not completely clear that this is the right explanation, but at least I will present you some uh, possible explanation for this effect. So due to the fact that we have uh, in the region outside the crater a crystal structure which is much more perfect and contains much less oxygen vacancies and also much less defects, we have the idea that we perhaps have a limited reservoir for oxygen vacancies. And then if we put a negative tip to the surface, we move the oxygen vacancies to the surface, but on the other hand, we um, deplete a deeper lying region with oxygen vacancies and at the end the uh, oxygen vacancy deficient region uh, beneath the topmost layer determines our conductivity and is therefore the explanation why we end up with a negative polarity in the high resistive state and not uh, in the low resistive state as in the case where we have an unlimited reservoir of oxygen vacancies for the filamentary type of switching. So um, now I will move to the point where we study the chemical changes which are induced during uh, electroforming. And uh, this is again the same sample as I've shown you before where we have uh, removed the top electrode. This is also necessary for this type of investigations because this is the photoelectron uh, spectroscopy and this is a type of spectral microscopy where we are detecting photoelectrons, but with an electron optics, with an electron optics, with an electron optics, we uh, are able to detect the place where the um, photoelectrons come from, and with doing some energy filtering afterwards, we are able to um, record, in principle, XPS spectra on different parts of the devices and get a, a local chemical mapping on our device area. So this is, uh, this is uh, uh, con the chemical contrast we see on our device. So this is a film picture which is recorded nearby the strontium 3D peak. And we see a clear contrast in the area where we have uh, the filament formation. And what we can see here is that the strontium content is increased in the crater region compared to the surrounding. And furthermore, what we observe is that we see also chemical changes on the strontium 3D peak. Instead of one component, we see 
there are two or even three different components of the strontium, which is in principle very unexpected for us because we normally expect it to see the valence uh, change on the titanium side and not on the strontium side. But uh, this effect is still under, uh, under debate. Uh, however, we should have in mind that there's going on something, uh, some kind of uh, decomposition because we see at least a strong increase of the strontium compound. So we see the vice versa on the titanium side. Here we have the uh, ECS spectra on the titanium 2p peak. And here uh, <coughs> we can see that um, in the crater itself, the titanium content is, uh, is decreased and, uh, compared to the surrounding. So we see that in the crater region surface, the strontium, strontium came to the surface, leaving, be, uh, leaving behind a, ti a titanium poor layer. So um, unfortunately, we, although we hoped to see a uh, valence change on the titanium side, we did not see anything in the XPS spectra. And the, uh, one of our explanations for that was that the, that the sample where the fact uh, the top electrode was removed uh, outside the, the, uh, the chamber that, and transported to the synchrotron, that we, uh, the surface was easily um, oxidized by the air. And therefore, we recorded some other type of measurements on our devices. This is X-ray absor absorption spectroscopy, which could, could, uh, was done in the same run. And uh, the advantage of X-ray absorption spectroscopy in the system is that since we detect the, uh, the uh, secondary electrons, the mean free path of the second er uh, secondary electrons is much higher than the uh, electrons which, uh, which are recorded in the XPS spectra, and therefore we have a much uh, deeper, much uh, longer information depth for the uh, X-ray absorption spectroscopy. And in the X-ray absorption spectroscopy, we can see nice differences in the crater region and outside. We see clear fingerprint of the switching process in the crater region. So uh, leaving behind the picture that we have uh, uh, the, the, and in the crater region, the strontium com comes out on the surface, leaving behind a titanium-rich uh, 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 oxygen vacancy containing a uh, filament area, where afterwards the switching takes place. So let me now compare the data uh, recorded with very surface-sensitive me uh, methods to a bulk-sensitive method. And um, these are also X-ray absorption spectroscopy measurements, but these measurements are done in the, by detecting not the, um, the, not the secondary electrons, but detecting the fluorescence of the sample. And um, as a result of the fluorescence yield, we have nearly um, information about the whole sample. Uh, so we did not have the, 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 uh, we did not have to remove the top electrode. We can have a look at real devices and in principle also working devices with this method. Uh, the disadvantage for us in that case was that our substrate uh, contains also titanium and strontium because it's strontium titanite, and therefore um, we decided not to have, have a look on the titanium and on the strontium, but concentrate on the uh, on a, a kind of marker material which we put inside. This was the iron, so we used iron doped strontium titanite and used the iron as a kind of marker for the redox process in our devices and um, recorded the iron KH in our sample. So similar trick was used by the IBM group on the chromium doped strontium titanite to record or detect oxygen vacancies. So oxygen vacancies have a strong influence on the, on the pre-edge of, uh, of the iron KH, and um, we recorded um, the spectra on different positions on the devices. We had a look on the on a pure film, then a film with the electrode on top, at the, means the device region where, which was formed, and then we had a direct look on the filament, and uh, we also had a, compar a comparison with a, a device which were completely broken broken down during electrical operation. And you can see that in this uh, pre-edge region a strong difference between the different places or the different situation here. So um, 
important for us was uh, the following. So if you see the film next to the uh, top electrode, and the blue one is the, the spectrum uh, beneath, uh, on the electrode itself, it shows that although we uh, integrate about the whole surface and we compare it with the outside, we see a clear difference uh, under the whole electrode and uh, to, to the pure film. That means that the area beneath the whole electrode has a higher concentration of oxygen vacancies than the electrode, and not only the filament itself. So it seems that there is a component where oxygen vacancies are produced during electric forming beneath the whole electrode and not only on the filament region itself. So uh, what we now did is we put, uh, uh, we moved uh, on this energy, uh, excitation energy, and did the mapping of our device, and then we received this kind of oxygen vacancy map uh, and we can see that in this crater region where we had the filament, we have a strong increase of oxygen vacancies compared to the rest of the sample. So these observations lead us to this kind of picture of uh, electroforming in uh, strontium titanite devices that we have during electroforming um, also a filamentary, uh, uh, a homogeneous process where the whole front of oxygen vacancies moves on. And then at the end, it seems that the single filament wins the race and breaks, makes, uh, makes the connection to the top electrode at a, sim a single position of the device. And this is the, the uh, position which we can see with the surface sensitive methods. So um, this leads us to the uh, following picture for the strong titanite devices. I showed you that we have for, for electric forming a homogeneous and a filamentary process and that in the uh, region of the main filament, we get stoichiometric and also morphological changes. Um, I showed you that we have uh, two switching polarities in one and the same device, and we assign the, this polarity, the counter eight wise polarity, to the filament switching type, and the eight wise polarity to uh, a more homogeneous type of resist switching in the devices. So let's move on to the PCMO part. Since I know that a lot of people are working on PCMO in this group, I introduce our latest results on the PCMO. Uh, these are the PhD students in my group working on that topic. And this uh, whole work is done in a collaboration with some Italian, Japanese groups, and also with the TM people from Antwerp. So um, here I will also start with the device properties. Uh, let's go to the uh, show you, show you some, some PEM yield results on the devices, and finally present you some hard X-ray uh, photo, uh, photo electron spectroscopy data, which uh, this technique has the advantage that it's uh, extra, uh, that it's uh, interface sensitive and gives us information about radar processes at foreign interfaces. So uh, I will start to say a few words about the device properties. I don't. Um, I have to say too much about PCMO in this audience. So uh, we investigated PCMO titanium devices, and uh, as is well known from the literature, uh, uh, especially from our previous speaker, it's well known that there's a redox process going on uh, between the titanium and the PCMO, which already leads to an uh, oxide layer at the interface. So we have to uh, consider this problem, and we wanted to know details of the redox process on these devices during forming and switching. So this is a, a IV curve, which we recorded. Uh, this, the, the red curve is the first sweep after the preparation of the virgin devices. At a certain voltage, we see a drop of the current, and we, uh, the devices move into a switching curve, which um, uh, has a, at all reduced uh, with a reduced current, and it can be uh, reversibly, reversibly switched. Um, so the interesting of this type is, as uh, already not unexpected, uh, is that the, if you have a look at the area dependence, we see that this forming ends up in a homogeneous type of forming, so that the complete device seems to be changed, the, uh, the conductivity of the complete area seems to be changed 
by performing the step. So to leave the things not so simple, we can also get other things. So if we further increase the voltage, we get a second uh, forming step, which also end up in a resist in nice reducible resistive switching curves, but uh, the shape of the IV curves are completely different. Uh, it's much more symmetric, this uh, type of switching curves, and also the area dependence completely disappears for this type of switching, so that also for the CSTM tester, we could have a uh, parliamentary type of switching or uh, area dependent switching. So uh, in the further in my further talk, I will concentrate on the devices after the first forming step, because for us it was the most interesting to compare this homogeneous switching, uh, because the uh, filamentary tile we already knew from the Wisconsin tile tonight. So we focused on the first forming step and uh, had a look first to the uh, TM here from the devices. You can see already here that we have our oxide layer, a very complex structure, uh, TM overall or FRO titanium top electrodes, here you see uh, titanium oxide layer, and uh, to what you can see already here, but it's to see it more, uh, it's, it's better to see it on the next paragraph is that we have a strong intermixing of uh, all types of elements in the, in the devices if you have a closer look. So um, this here is the, the virgin sample, which is on the rest of the talk called ERS, initial resistive state, and this is the high resistive state uh, after reduced after forming. So um, here's the PCMO, here's the titanium, and here's the interface region, which is very broad. So we see, especially we see strong diffusion of calcium inside this uh, titanium containing interface area. And um, if you have a look at the blue curve, at the oxygen curve, you see a very interesting effect. So they have the maximum of the, in the, of the oxygen. Uh, in the initial resistive state, you have somewhere in the beginning of the titanium oxide layer, very nearby this, or, or in the middle of the interdiffusion area. And especially, it's in the place where the PCMO is more or less already vanished. So the, we think that this is the area where we have a titanium, di a titanium oxide layer, which is somehow uh, strongly doped with calcium. And um, if we have a look now in the state after the forming procedure, you see that the oxygen is moving, the maximum of the oxygen is moving uh, in the direction of the titanium driven by the electric field. And a very broad uh, shift of the oxygen, uh, the oxygen from the titanium, uh, starting titanium oxide layer to <laughs> to the titanium metal. So the titanium seems already, what is already uh, suggested by this observation is that not the, titan that the oxygen is not moved from the PCMO to the titanium. So then, uh, instead, it, it seems already that the uh, oxygen is moved from the very beginning of the titanium oxide layer deeper inside the titanium. So um, and I, in order to have a closer look on this effect on the different valence changes in the material, we uh, did um, hard X-ray spe um, spectroscopy, uh, photoelectron spectroscopy, because the uh, yield spectroscopy strongly suffers from a limited signal-to-noise ratio, and um, therefore we uh, went uh, to the synchrotron uh, and uh, investigated our samples. Uh, uh, the advantage, as I have already mentioned, uh, by uh, using these high excitation energies for the photoelectrons, the electrons have a higher energy, and this is the universal curve, curve for the uh, inelastic metric path of electrons in materials, and you can clearly see that for higher energies, you have a, a, a higher penetration depth or a higher information depth. So this uh, technique gives us the possibility to have a look beneath the all electrode, and this is, uh, in principle, the ideal situation for this kind of systems, where we are not able to remove the electrode, as in case for the platinum. Uh, for the titanium, it's nearly impossible, due to the strong uh, chemical, con uh, uh, chemical reaction, it's not possible to, to get rid of the titanium. So, um, the disadvantage of this method is that you don't have spatial resolution, 
So we have a rather large footprint of the beam, uh, and uh, we, we are not having a possibility to look on a single device. Instead, we produce arrays which were switched in certain resistive states, and uh, we also had to reduce, our, although it's interface sensitive, we also had to reduce the top electrode for this kind of, uh, the thickness of the top electrode for these kind of experiments. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, we switched then a complete array to uh, a certain resistive states and compared it to virgin arrays. So let me first come to the changes in the PCMO system after the first forming step. Uh, what we can clearly, in this part I would start with the comparison with the bare PCMO system, which we use as a reference sample, one of our PCMO films without titanium on top. And the, the, the most striking contrast we saw in the spectra was the comparison between the bare PCO, PCMO and the PCMO with titanium on top. So we can see a, a, a clear shift of the manganese peak uh, to lower binding energy, which is a fingerprint of having a, a redox process from the manganese 4 plus to the manganese 3 plus. And um, interestingly, if we have a look on the other spectra of the presidium and the calcium, we also see a shift of the peak, but this shift goes in the other direction. And um, our explanation for that is what we here prove is this, that this kind of shift is a, a shift of the Fermi level of the system, which is induced in the PCMO due to the redox reaction with the titanium. And what we uh, see additionally on the manganese is a shift in the other direction, which is caused by the fact that we have a, a, a change of the valence on the manganese side. So um, coming up with uh, all these things, putting all things together, uh, comes the important point that we see a strong difference between bare PCMO and, bare, and PCMO with uh, titanium on top, but we see nearly no difference between the initial resistive state and the uh, high resistive state for the, for the PCMO side of the, of the devices. Um, so let's have a look in comparison to the titanium. And on the titanium, it's uh, very, very obvious that, uh, that we see a strong difference between the as prepared sample, the red curve, and the blue curve, which is the curve after forming. We see uh, a strong increase of the titanium 4 plus uh, compound and a decrease of the metallic titanium in the system, which uh, leads us to the idea that we really have to consider uh, for the devices that the main redox process goes on at least here during forming on the titanium side. And if we, have, uh, if we draw uh, some kind of preliminary band diagram, <clears throat> we have uh, in the initial resistive state, we have the situation that the uh, oxide layer is so, so thin and really um, insulating, additionally conf uh, confirmed by the idea that we have a calcium doped titanium oxide, which is uh, a highly insulating layer, although there are some oxygen vacancies inside, and we don't have a PN junction to the PCMO, which is um, consistent with the fact that we also see very, very symmetric IV curves in the initial resistive state, and after forming, we start to have a system which is very un, un, uh, uh, iso, uh, uh, asymmetric, and uh, hints on that we get in, after forming, a PN junction between the titanium oxide, the reduced and conducting titanium oxide, and the P-conducting PCMO. So, uh, there are some preliminary data on our latest investigations about the low resistance state and the high resistance state, and uh, it's uh, interesting that also for the switching, not only for the forming, we see a strong difference, uh, nearly no difference on the manganese side and a very, very significant, oops, a very, very significant change on the titanium side. So it seems for us at the moment that not only uh, the uh, red forming but also the switching and the PCMO titanium samples uh, is mainly the effect of a redox process on the titanium top electrode or at the interface between the PCMO and the titanium. So let me come to a, a summary for the PCMO. Also, although generally accepted that it's a homogeneous switching system, we can also see a silomentary type for the PCMO. Uh, our chemical investigators, 
in the investigations of the system show that, that we have a significant intermixing region between the PCMO and the uh, titanium, and that the Reynolds process on the titanium side dominates the forming as well as the resistance switching in the system. And now at the end, let me come back to my science art from the beginning. Uh, and I think I would like to stress that during my talk, I showed you that this picture is far, especially for complex oxides, far too simple uh, than having a nice movement of oxygen vacancies between the filament region and the electrode. So for complex system, we also have to regard that we have phase changes or phase separations in the system, which we have shown for the strontium titanite. You can have different types of uh, uh, switching polarities, which is caused also by different gradients of oxygen vacancies. Uh, it can be filamentary, but also homogeneous, even for the strontium titanite system or the PCMO system. I showed you that we also have to consider movement of cations in the system and strong intermixing effect at the electrodes. And that finally also the redox process occurs on a completely different part of your device that you have accepted, expected at the beginning. So let me thank you now for your attention. Thank you very much for a very interesting and nice talk. Uh, it's open for question the session. Afternoon. Um, when you began with PCMO, uh, you say that the first forming to negative polarity was an increase in current. And in the next slide, you show that the first forming is a drop of current. I am right? Sorry? Ah, okay. Okay. So the, 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 form, the first forming is uh, the same for the two polarities. Or it's the... So, so you will describe this as a change, a gradual change from an interface type of uh, resistor switching to a filamentary type of, uh, is it, uh, sorry, my question is, is it gradual, is it... Uh, Uh, just as I mentioned, Diego Rubí in his talk tomorrow will show some re related results which may uh, we describe as a crossover regime, but tomorrow. So, other questions? Thanks. Uh, just in the very first part of the, of the talk, when you mentioned there is two switching um, in the titanium oxide films, uh, in the STO films, do you can? Yes, on this one. Uh, do, do you know the on-off ratio that de will depend on switching of uh, filament, or the on-off ratio that will depend on the uh, switching of the full layer, of, of the full device? I think uh, the on-off ratio is generally a little bit higher for the A-pipe filament. So
Uh, when you use the iron edge for the characterization of the number of vacancies and then you draw this uh, very nice map, I sort of understood be in the beginning that uh, the electoral deposition promotes the existence of additional vacancies, but then in the map it looked like under the electrode you had less vacancies than outside the electrode. Yes. So that, that explains why the, the border looks uh, with less vacancies, actually, right? It's like... 